I mean, he's never even drawn his gun. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it makes no sense. What's he's he never hit anybody. He's never... Gun enthusiast or just... Never. A few... well, he had a couple of handguns, I think. You know, he had a safe with a couple of handguns. He might have had one long rifle, but he didn't have any... I mean, he had no automatic weapons when that I know that I knew of at any time. I... I... There's no... It just, just makes no sense. You're about to encounter a very interesting video here in regards to what might have happened in regards to the Las Vegas shooting. And I told you that I might put this video up, and I decided to go ahead and do it. Now, this is just a theory, so um, highlight that word theory in your head. Now, one thing for sure... <laughs> Uh, I'm going to miss some things in this, so a lot of you out there are brilliant, and you leave some incredible comments and ideas, so feel free to comment on this video, and I highly suggest all of you to read the comments. If it doesn't get to be overwhelming, it could end up with tens of thousands of comments, I don't know, but, you know, try to read some of the comments, and the ones that seem most important, I will probably comment on. And if you see me kind of on a video, you might want to read what that person had to say above me. But, yeah, this is going to be a very interesting video, I can promise you that. And I'm going to get right into it here. But, like I said, I'm probably going to miss some things in this. And some of you brilliant people out there, comment and suggest and um, talk about things that would support my theory right here. Because there's a lot to this, but... Here we go. <laughs> okay, so what hap What 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 if? What occurred in Las Vegas? Well, first of all, I want to say, overall, most people have agree with me that this man does not fit the profile of somebody that would do something like this. He's got lots of money. He's got no kids. Got a girlfriend. His house is worth over four hundred thousand dollars. From what I understand, he's a multimillionaire. He likes to gamble, but. He seems to be able to control it. He won right before he committed this horrible act. Well, I'm not going to say committed sorry, but but anyway, because uh, maybe he didn't. Maybe maybe. Uh, well, I'll get into details of that. I haven't explained that yet. But um, just he's got a lot of things going his way. The only thing that I think he was lacking is guidance because he didn't have faith in anything, God. But I won't get into that because um, you know some people may disagree with me that, but. So he had a lot of things, and he was 64 years old, no financial problems, no psychiatric emotional problems, was never evaluated for any type of emotional illness, condition, um, anything like that. He, uh, so what I'm saying basically is he didn't fit the profile of a typical person that might do something like that. Oh, he didn't have any, as far as we know, he didn't have any strong political beliefs like a H. Bot Clinton, Hillary Clinton hater, or uh, Donald Trump, President Donald Trump hater, nothing like that going on that we know of. And what else do we know? He worked for Lockheed Martin, very credible company, which is very close and tied in with NASA. Those two work close together. And these are government projects, government companies that do all kind of amazing things um, in regards to traveling into space and, and just all kind of interesting stuff, you know. And, and, it, and also, I just, I just came on top of my head, but in the interview that I have with his brother, what did he say? Um, I think the words were like an asteroid or something. I don't know. <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about. Something like that, uh, which was kind of strange, but that also has to do with NASA and Lockheed Martin and all this stuff. So, you know, he pretended not to be close to him, but... You know, and uh, and also I want to mention too, his neighbors that they tried to contact all said that they don't know him. They even left notes on the door, don't know him. Uh, there's a reason for that too, because they don't want to get involved in something that may have gone wrong with the government, or may have gone wrong with him. You know, and I want before I even get to this, I want to say with this too, uh, anyone can make mistakes. I think, in my personal own belief and feelings, is that the government has done a really good job 
at keeping many terrorist acts from happening in this country. If you think about the, the, um, the statistics of the, how many terrorist attacks we're having all over the world, you see them all over, you know, unfortunately, it's horrible. Paris, um, uh, London, I mean, I could just go on. They're, they're occurring everywhere. We don't have a whole lot right here in the United States. And when we do, we use it some type of domestic terrorism, something, or maybe a lone wolf or something like that. But, but we're not having um, ISIS right here committing many terrorist acts and causing problems here, which is a good thing. So I want to credit the government for that. But it doesn't mean we can't make a mistake. And maybe that's what happened here in Las Vegas the other day. Theory. Theory. Highlight theory. <laughs> because we don't want this to get out of control, right? But, so yeah. Um, some of the things I want to point out, uh, well, I'll, I'll just say this first. Uh, what if this guy was an FBI informant running guns to Muslim extremist groups to try to catch these people and set them up and get these links and this pyramid that would help us to understand what's going on, catch them, and stop this from happening, right? What if he was? I mean, I'm just saying it's theory. What if he was? Um, why would the government or why would um, the FBI be interested in him? Uh, well, he's got a good security clearance. He worked for Lockheed Martin, which is tied into NASA. A very good security clearance. In fact, speaking of security clearance, uh, I just want to mention this right quick. You see this screenshot here from... April the 18th of 2011, a friend of mine that I used to hang out with, she worked for NASA in the Department of Homeland Security. You can see that arrow, DHS. And one day she had an emergency, <laughs> and I had to go over there and see her, and she didn't think I was going to get in there. But some people have a good clearance. And she said she's never seen anybody get in there like I did because um, all I did was go to the gate. They checked me out, and they said, sure, go right in. <laughs> And she said, she's had people come there before to try to get in, and she, she has to call them and talk to them, and it takes a long time to get them in there. But, but fortunately, the government, I have a good standing with the government, and NASA likes me, so I got in there. And that was back in 2011. That's the exact same year where you see this screenshot here um, where Stephen Paddock, which is a shooter in Las Vegas, the exact same year where he... Um, he was seen, well, he was actually in the casino, and, and he slipped and fell. And that's the only video that we know we have of him. <laughs> but you can see him, you can see him in, in that video if you want to go see it. That was the same year that he was, do, uh, unfortunately, had that, that fall there. And um, so, but, get more into this here. Yeah, so he would have a good security clearance, obviously. And so that would be one of the reasons why they'd be interested in him. He's got a good track record at Lockheed Martin. Oh, and another thing I didn't mention, he has no criminal record. That's another reason. Uh, no emotional or psychiatric problems. No kids. Plenty of money, so he's not going to likely to do something um, illegal while he's working for the FBI to get money. Um, and I, I've mentioned a lot of things already. I mean, so I guess I should just get more into... Um, to this era, because this is going to get quite crazy and interesting. But uh, one thing I want to mention, too, uh, he, so he gets all these guns. He's got, what, I don't know, it's 22 guns in the hotel, many of them long rifles, what, 1,000 round, am tons of ammunition. I don't know how much, a lot of ammunition. And then he's got a ton more guns at his house. So why would anybody have that many guns? What's the point of that? You can only shoot one or maybe two at the most at the same time. So that would be also suggest that maybe he's trying to get rid of them or sell them or, or you know, um, run them, I guess you would say. That would support that theory, certainly. And the light's probably coming on for a lot of you because this is very interesting. But, Yeah. So that's why I say that. Now, like I said, the hotel staff noticed nothing. Why would they notice nothing? Because they're told to notice nothing. Um, there's no camera footage of him going into the casino with the, with the weapons. People claim it was in a suitcase or something. There's, in fact, there's, they haven't showed us any. Um, the casinos we know have tons of cameras, especially in Las Vegas. So there's a lot of footage of him on camera. But they haven't showed us anything, right? Absolutely nothing. And they hadn't showed him bringing the guns in. 
Haven't shown him going into the hotel. Um, nothing. Uh, security, I mean, um, hotel staff says that nothing was unusual, yet they, had to, they did go in his room and clean it from what I understand. <laughs> so it wasn't unusual for him to have all the guns. So obviously they would have told him, don't say anything. And they would um, obviously, um, they would choose certain individuals to go in and do this. It wouldn't just be anybody at random. They'd have to be in on this uh, sting, what's going on here. Now, also I want to note that what's interesting is, you know how the news agencies are very aggressive. Uh, oh, but, oh, also I should mention about the pictures. You've seen the pictures I put up earlier from the hotel room. Those pictures could obviously, you know, they, were, they may have been leaked or maybe they were put out there on purpose. Um, but you can notice some things in the pictures and some people point out different things like the gun doesn't look like it's in the right place if you commit suicide. Hmm, I'd probably agree with that. Um, the hammer. So then you're going to ask questions too because after you see this video, you're going to analyze things. You'll be like, well, why would this be like that? Why would that be like I'll just mention a couple things. Like, for example, I'll mention the hammer. You know, why would there be a hammer in there? Um, well, so what, ha what would happen would he would be set up to do this sting. He was there for several days. And it just didn't go right. Um, some way, you know, ISIS claimed responsibility for this. Most of you know ISIS. And I'm not going to show you a bunch of screenshots. And you can look this up if you want. But ISIS claimed um, responsibility for the shooting. They usually don't claim responsibility for a shooting unless they actually were involved in it or did it. And they claim that they, that they, that they caused this. And maybe they did, they did cause it. They didn't go into details about it. But... They came out, I think, well, actually the news came out and said, I think that this man converted to Islam, and, and, but that would be obviously a lie, and that uh, he was a jihadist or what jihadist or whatever, I don't know. But, uh, but how they would be involved, I can tell you that in just a second. But, but yeah, they, they, uh, they may have been tipped off on the sting. It could have gone down before they got there. Or maybe they saw something when they arrived in the hotel room to get these guns and purchase them. But something went wrong, and when it went wrong, that's when possibly these terrorists decided to um, go ahead and commit a terrorist act. And there is a couple gunshots individually that people heard. And that could be when they shot and killed him. So obviously, if they uh, were tipped off or learned of this man being an informant for the FBI, they would kill him, which in fact happened. And then they're already up there, so they would commit a terrorist act. Now, so why wouldn't we know about this? Well, think about the implications of the embarrassment of the government. Um, the FBI, the Las Vegas Police Department. Think about how horrible this would be. All those people that lost their lives because there were people that actually shot. Now, this could be what you call a false flag. People can get shot in false flags. <laughs> I mean, it happens, you know, regardless if the government's involved or not. But if things go down really bad, just think what would happen if, um, if people found out that this was an FBI sting and... All those people lost their lives. Police lost his life. I think a nurse lost her life. Um, uh, 500 and something people were injured. And it was all due because of a sting to find out uh, Muslim terrorist extremist groups buying weapons. And it went wrong. In a hotel. A regular hotel. Now, I know, I can tell you that FBI uses these, some of these hotels. Um, I know which ones they use here in New Orleans, but, but anyway, we don't need to get into that. So, if something went wrong, just think how embarrassing that would be. And, 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 uh, and, you know, and then people might blame it on, well, oh, Trump was, President Trump, he, was, he, was, he knew about this. He, he, that's the reason, you know, there's just a lot of bad things that could happen. So, um, so that would be the problem why they wouldn't want it exposed, obviously. And, um, so yeah. So I'll get into more details of this. Uh, 
Yeah, it's just a horrible thing that happened, and it should have never happened. Um, but we're not seeing any camera footage of him inside the hotel or anything like that, and there's a reason for that, too. Um, he was on the 32nd floor, of course. Now, another thing I want you to note, too, is, you know, the news and everybody would, would be very likely to want to interview people on that 32nd floor, right? Have you seen, I haven't seen anybody interviewed from, that was on the 32nd floor. Why would they not be on the 32nd floor? Because if you're committing, a, uh, if you're doing a sting, you're going to make sure none of those rooms have anybody in them. That whole room would be, that whole floor would be empty. Now, they would make it look like people were in it by putting uh, plates and dishes outside the room like they get in room service, stuff like that, but nobody's actually in there, obviously. You don't want anybody in any of the rooms on that floor if they're committing a sting. And the only, I've only seen video footage of one person shooting video out from, from inside that hotel. And that hotel is huge. I don't know it, how many thousands of rooms it has, so you might find that odd too. But there would be a reason for that, I'm sure. You know. um, Now, I think I mentioned that the neighbors, yeah, neighbors don't know him. There's, of course, a reason for that. But all those guns, think about it, all the guns in his house, all the guns in the hotel, all that ammunition they found. Um, there's no point to that unless you are trying to sell these things or, or run them. Uh, there's no point to that. I mean, that's no, but, you know, that makes no sense at all. Not with all the money and, and the um, stable mentality they had and, the, and just everything, you know. It would make no sense. Also, um, I want to mention that one of the reasons that, that he would be selected to do something like this is because, well, there's many reasons, actually, but one of the ones I want to point out is that he's a, he's a known high roller at the casinos. So if you're, if you're anybody involved in terrorism or anything like that, or you want to purchase money for some, I mean, purchase guns for some horrible act or whatever, you're going to check that person out. So they would know that he's a high roller and he's, he likes money. So, it would be much more believable that he was not an FBI informant and that he was just somebody that was willing to try to help them get what they wanted. Why is that? Because he, he feeds, on, he feeds on, on money. So, selling these weapons, he would get money, right? Quite a bit of money for doing it, selling it to them. Because um, it's, you know, it's hard to get the... They can get the weapons outside the country, but it would be very hard for terrorists to get the weapons inside the country. So, they like to, to try to you know, seek somebody that would do it for them. And also, they, they seek uh, lone wolves, too, you know, that commit these acts. But, so yeah, that'd be more believable of him because he's a man that likes to take risk, right? He takes risk being a high roller. Um, because, basically, uh, he's, he's got a top star uh, casino cards at a lot of these casinos. In other words, the highest card you can get with stars or whatever, he's got that at a lot of casinos. So he's a known high roller. Uh, he's been known to bet ten thousand dollars at a time. You, usually not. Usually hundred dollar hands or something. But on some days he's been known to bet as much as ten thousand dollars. So yeah, he would fit the profile of somebody that might be trusted if you were trying to purchase weapons from him because he's a high risk person that likes to get money, acquiring large amounts of money, willing to take him take high risk to acquire the money. Dealing guns to extremist crews is like gambling. It's a high-risk endeavor, like high roller gamblers. A love of the danger and excitement of high-risk endeavors in order to acquire huge amounts of money. To him, a game that pumps adrenaline in his blood and puts cash in his bank accounts. The thrill of the beating the odds and winning was an addiction that he liked. Um, now, you see also that they brought... His girlfriend, the FBI grabbed her from the airport earlier tonight. I have a video up on that. And they have her in Los Angeles at a secure location. And the reason for this is because she could be a target. Now, I'm not saying whether the terrorists were captured or whether they got away in regards to this theory at the, um, you know, at the hotel when this, everything went bad and wrong. Um, I'm not saying if they caught him or if they got away. 
If they got away, yeah. I mean, that's going to really put some people on the edge. If they caught him, still a horrible thing happened. So, I mean, you know, it's just a horrible thing that happened. But, but the reason, uh, the reason being that she would be taken by the FBI. In fact, uh, think about this. You know, the FBI contacted her. She was over in what? Um, the Philippines, I think, the Philippine Islands. And she'd traveled several places, too. So she could have even been an informant. I don't know. But, but she'd traveled several places in her last destination that she was at. Oh, and I'll also mention that uh, he wired her $100,000. That's a lot of money. He wired her $100,000. That's been confirmed. Now... When she flew back in last night from the Philippines, the FBI met her at the airport, took her, kept her safe and took her, and has her somewhere in the big city of Los Angeles. And why would they do that? Because at first, what did they say? They first came out in the news, and the police said that she was not suspected. And why would they say that if she's in another country and they haven't even had a chance to physically um, interrogate or talk to her? That makes no sense at all. But then, they'll, but then yesterday they came out and said, no, we want to talk to her. We're interested in talking to her. She's a person of interest. So the whole story changed. <laughs> and they want to do that, obviously, because if the FBI met her at the airport and she was not a person of interest and they weren't interested in talking to her, then the people would be like, well, why did the FBI take her and meet her at the airport? But the reason they would do that is because her life would be in danger from these people that were involved in this gun exchange. And, uh, and so, yeah, if they found her at the airport or whatever, they might take her hostage or kill her or whatever because um, she was the girlfriend of this man that was in on this that's, uh, that's now deceased, dead. So, yeah, I talk about things like the hammer and the gloves. That all, you know, a lot of you saying, well, why is it gloves on this man? What's he need that for? It doesn't make any sense. Well... I don't know. Was it planted some of this? You know, I mean, isn't it? Don't you find it kind of strange that all of a sudden that somebody could actually? I mean, think about this. Now, whether or not those pictures were released on purpose or not, I can't say. But think about this. You have a the biggest mass murder crime scene, which is in that hotel, that particular hotel room, in the history of the United States. And somebody got in there and took pictures, and they don't know who it is. Do you really think that could happen? That floor is, there's nobody staying on that floor, I can assure you that. That floor is cut off, you know, they take, the elevators can shut floors off, we know that. You've been to a casino or a hotel where, like, the penthouse suite floor, you can't get to it. you got to have a um, special uh, hotel key and enter in there and all. So we know they can cut floors off. That floor is cut off. Nobody can get on that floor. The police aren't going to, um, especially with the script, they're not going to release those pictures, take pictures of police. So who got that? Who, who leaked that? Who got those? Um, seems like it would be on purpose, right? So maybe there's some things in that picture that you might want to take a close look at. Uh, some of that stuff might have been planted. Uh, I find it very unlikely that somebody is going to get in there they're going to have a policeman probably guarding that hotel room. And, well, the, right in front of that hotel room probably 24 hours a day. Because the police chief said today the investigation is going to go on for a long time. They haven't finished with that. Nobody's on that floor. It's locked off. You have to have special access to it. Um, and yet somebody got in there and took these pictures and even video. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, I know. I'm probably missing some more stuff, too. I mean, just think about his profile, his character, his job, his lifestyle. Um, oh, yeah. And then, you know, like I said, this is a theory. Share it, like it if you want. Please leave comments. Give more details. I know I missed some stuff. I know I did. But the more you look at it, the more you might believe this could be a possibility. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. Leave your comments, and I'll read them. I'll read all the comments. I mean, it's comments coming in these videos and all this stuff. It's like a comment every second. But I, I scan through them quickly. I do read every one of them. I can't, don't read every single word, but I do glance at them. And if something sticks out, I read the whole thing, and I reply to a lot of them. And uh, so, yeah. Leave some comments, and... Uh,
And if you believe this theory, just have forgiveness, you know. Anybody can make a mistake. Thanks.